skilled one about the nomenclature of organic compounds. Organic compounds are compounds of carbon compounds. There are large number of compounds because carbon has got a special property called catenation and large number of compounds are there. Millions of compounds are there. So earlier organic compounds were named as per their tubular name that is the source from where it is obtained. As the number of compounds decrease, it becomes very difficult and therefore, in 1892 in Geneva, uh, a particular meeting was called and a new type of nomenclature was formed. It is called IUPSC Nomenclature of Organic Compounds. IUPSC stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Two important branches of chemistry, pure chemistry and the applied chemistry. Any compound to be named, it has to follow the rules and regulations of IUPSC. So, mainly organic compounds are classified into open chain compounds, closed chain compounds. In open chain compounds, there are aliphatic compounds. Aliphatic again can be saturated and unsaturated. In saturated, there will be alkane series, hydrocarbon mainly, and unsaturated contains carbon carbon double bonds and triple bonds, alkenes and alkynes. There are closed chain compounds also, we call cyclic compounds. They can be two types again, that is homocyclic, which contains only carbon in the skeleton, and heterocyclic, where heteroatoms like sulfur, nitrogen, oxygen, etc. are present in the skeleton of the ring. Homocyclic can again be two types, that is alicyclic, aliphatic but cyclic, and aromatic, like benzene addicts, there. Heterocyclic compounds are also two types, can be aromatic or can be a heteroatom present but not aromatic. So today what we are going to see is about the IUPAC nomenclature of aliphatic compounds. Aliphatic compounds. Aliphatic compounds, as I said earlier, they are open chain compounds. Open chain compounds. And we start with a simple compound like alkanes. Alkanes are uh, compounds of carbon and hydrogen. They are saturated compounds. They contain carbon carbon single bond. Alkenes, there are certain rules for this particular one. Uh, number one is you have to select the longest continuous chain. Let us see an example a compound now right here. So, what you have to do is that you have to find how many carbons are present. In alkenes, they have general formula CN, H2F plus 2. So, first four members uh, are followed with the same trivial name. They are methane, ethane, propane, and butane. They are retained in the IPC nomenclature. But from 5 carbon orbits, they are carbon 1, alkene, methane, ethane is second carbon, 2 carbon compound, and 3 carbon is propane, and 4 carbon compound in alkene is butane. 5 orbits, the Greek prefix penta, hexa, hepta, deca, octa, nane, and deca, they are there. So, first four numbers are the same as in the, uh, we call IUPC nomenclature also. The name also we call it systematic nomenclature. Systematic name or systematic nomenclature. The other one, trivial name, we call non systematic name. So let us see this compound. This compound, how many carbons are there? We have to see the longest continuous chain. So suppose I start numbering and start from anywhere. I will go the rule one by one. Suppose I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the longest chain is heptane, 7, so heptane. 
So first rule is select the longest continuous chain and name the chain. So it's done F A. Seven carbons are there. So F A. Number two is that the third one is number the longest chain so as to get lowest number to the substituent. Now what is the substituent? Any particular group which is present in the longest chain. This is the chain we have chosen. So this is the seven word chain and there is a substituent over here. So that one is called substituent. There are different substituents like nitro, nitroso, halo, alkyl, alkoxy, azo. Any particular substituent can be present. Now how to do that? So the substituent is there. I get number from left side or from right side. If I start from left side, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the position of the substituent is three. But if I start from right side, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, the substituent is on the fifth carbon. So the rule is that the substituent <coughs> should get the longest number possible. Which is possible? It cannot be one. So wherever it is possible from left side or right side, so we are choosing from the left side, not from the right side. Now identifying substituent. The so substituent is here. So this substituent is called methyl group. So it is generally called alkyl group. Alkyl groups are groups obtained by uh, removing a hydrogen from the corresponding alkyl. So alkyl is obtained by removing. So from alkyl, A and E is removed and you are putting Y here. So corresponding alkyl, this is one carbon compound. So methane. So we get methyl. So this group is called methyl. So methyl group is there. So identify the substituent and you will have to put that substituent as a prefix. Now what is a prefix? Two things are there. One is prefix, other one is suffix. Usually we write suffix as a parent alkyl or parent compound. Here alkyl, so parent alkyl. That is written as a suffix written at the last. Prefix is a derivative, something is derived, which is always written in front, in the beginning. Now, before writing this as the prefix, alkyl group, the number is also to be written. So, a number, we already say we have to number from left side, so it is position is 3. We call it also by another name, it is called locket, the position, so it is 3. So, how do you write? We have to write 3. Whenever you write a number and name, it has to be separated by a hyphen. Number and a name. If there are two or more numbers, they are separated by four. So three. So the name of this compound is the substituent is methyl. Three methyl. So we came up with that. So no other substituent is there. If there were more substituent, then you are supposed to put that one also. Suppose I put one over here. I put another substituent over there. Ethyl. Now, so the rule is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there is one more substituent. So we have to number that also. Now when two substituent comes, there has to be a rule called alphabetizing. So this particular one has to be arranged in alphabetic order. So what is that? That is coming on fourth carbon. It is four ethyl. Now whenever methyl group and ethyl group is present, the one which comes alphabetically first it has to be written first. So it is ethyl to be written first, but the number remains same. So how do you write? You are going to write like this: four ethyl, four separated by hyphen ethyl. Then again hyphen because another number comes over there. Three hyphen methyl. Two substituents are there now. So suppose. I was having two methyl groups, then I would have said dimethyl. 
but the T is not counted in alphabetizing. Okay, so 3, 4 methyl, 3 methyl. Now, what is there? No other substrate will be there. Our substrate of parent alkene is heptene. So, 3 methyl, 4 methyl, 3 methyl, heptene. So, this is the name of the compound. So, what we have seen here, we selected the longest continuous chain, then we named it. The number in such a way that the locants are there, substituted longest number, identified substituent, then two different substituents go in an alphabetic way when writing, and then write the parent alkene as the suffix. This is written as the suffix. So, this is the prefix, two groups are there, numbers are there. So, there are some rules for that particular word. One more thing I want to tell you that. Uh, all the compounds are written in a single word, IUPAC name, all the things are written in a single way, except some compounds like carboxylic acid or derivatives of that. They are having, can be written in a two word. Commas and hyphen, I have already told you, whenever two numbers are there, they are separated by comma, and whenever number and name are there, separated by hyphen. Some prefixes are there. Prefix in the sense we call it like uh, cis, trans, miso, etc. They are always written in italics and they are separated by hyphen between the parent. Then there are some prefix like di, tri, tetra, etc. They are written along with the compound like methyl, dimethyl, trimethyl. But that is not counted again, but that is also not counted for alphabetization. Then <coughs> uh, only ISO is allowed, there are compounds that we call like uh, can obtain, then there can be ISO obtain, or some can be some neo contain. These are another thing which you find in uh, Trinidad. L yes, stands for normal octane, that is a linear one, no branching at all. Isoctane, there is a carbon, uh, second carbon, there is a methyl group, or second last carbon, there is a methyl group, and it is a eight carbon compound, so isoctane. Neoprintane, you know, it's a uh, compound like this uh, tetraline carbon, this is called neoprintane. But only ISO is allowed in IUPAC and NEO and N are not written in IUPAC normally. So, this is the basic rules of alkanes. All the alkanes, they end with the suffix N. Always, all alkanes, they end with the suffix N. So, we have seen two, three important things. One is about the uh, suffix, another one is prefix, then numbering. Then rules for numbering. Let us see another compound. Or if you want to write a compound like this over here, Another example, let us see this compound chlorine and what more I will put? I will put you know here uh, methyl. How to number it? Now you have to see the longest chain. So, longest chain of alkene, it's an alkene series, or saturated one. Either you can take this one or you can take this one. Both the same one. How many carbons are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Can say so in both the way it is same. For so example, here numbering over here straight way or from here both the same. Now I have to do numbering so in such a way that the lowest numbers should go. So I'll go from left side or right side. I'll go from left side because methyl group is here. And what is chlorine? Two chlorine are the number there. So numbering one, two, three, four, five, six. So I go in. Hexane, the parent compound is hexane. 
Now lactans two substituent three substituents are in two are chlorine on the four carbon and one methyl group alkyl group methyl group on the second carbon. So I can call it C chloro that comes before methyl. Even though number is four, it has to be written first. So how will I write? I'll write four. If there are two chlorine atoms or any atoms on the same carbon, I will write it twice. So I'll write. Four separated by comma four. Then I got two chloro, so I call it dichloro. So this is separated by hyphen. Then dichloro. D is not counted. I counted C actually. Chloro. Then the second one. There is hyphen here again. Two and the second carbon. There is a methyl. And the parent that is hexane. So this is the way of writing. The IUPAC nomenclature for alkenes. So you can have many substituents like nitro, nitroso, allo, any of the other substituents also in alkenes. So knowing the IUPAC nomenclature, how to write for alkene, you can write for alkene also. Suppose both the chlorine were in the fifth position. Yeah. Then that gets. If it were the over here, you yeah. said, huh? so it will be Cl. Over here, like this, right. and this is the H, correct? CH two, hmm. correct? And here is CH. In this case, we will have to move from this side because two close to two and over here, so we will move from right side. So it will be the end will be different. It will be two two dichloro and uh, five yeah. five methyl it exit. Okay, so we can go with uh, you know different alkenes. Very simple compared to. This one, knowing the IUPAC nomenclature for alkene, alkene can be done very fast. Only thing is that you have to select the longest chain containing carbon, carbon double. So I will write an example. Suppose I write over here. Also, I'll put a substituent over here. I'll put NO2, another substituent. Let me see. So I put CH3, CH2. Now this is C double bond CH2. This is CH2, CH2, CH, NO2, and CH. Now I have to find out the longest chain. So the chain will be such that the double bond should be a part of it. Now I cannot take like this. This will not be my longest chain. So longest chain means this should be involved. So my thing will be your structure skeleton will be something like this, not the other way around. So that's the basic difference between alkene and alkene. Double bond should be there. It need not be from the beginning. It can be anywhere, but longest position to the functional group. Now numbering will be all done. It will be safe. So that the lowest number possible to the alkene. So how many carbons are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this will say six carbon. So it is ANE will be replaced to ENE. Difference ANE. So we have seen ANE that was for alkene. So it will be completely ENE. Basic difference will be ENE. Now the position of numbering also the longest number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is starting from here, so it is hexene. 6 carbon hexene, which where is the position where the double bond starts? So double bond started 1 and 2, so it is 1 hexene. Substituent priority goes to this one, not to nitro. So there is a priority rule we will see later. 
So nitro, so number it will be from here, not from there. So this will be uh, 5 nitro 1 hexene. 5 nitro 1 hexene. How do you write? 5 separated by hyphen, then there is nitro and then separated by hyphen again because number comes and then hexene. Hexene. We can write hex one in also depend. So it's not supposed. So anyway, the basic thing is we'll count the prefix, the number of the location or locant, then the name of that, then the position of the double bond and the parent line. Very similar meaning there's the kind of acquisition to it. Also, yeah. So there will be uh, one more substituent over there. So second carbon there is so Nitro and other one is ethyl. So this will be 2 ethyl. So it will be 2 ethyl hyphen 5 nitro 1 C. Correct? Yes. So 2 ethyl because E comes before N, other substituent. 2 ethyl 5 nitro 1 C. Thank you. So that is correct. So we will go to another one that is alkyl. Very similar alkyl also. Only difference is that select the longer chain containing carbon carbon triple bond. So there has to be a triple bond over there. So and that triple bond should be a part of the longer chain. So that is there. Then number same way, number in such a way that the lowest number goes to the triple bond. Suppose I write over here, I'll change this, I'll change the same triple bond over here. And number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then you can nitro over here. And you can have 1, 2, 3, 4, CS2, CS3. It is balanced. Okay, numbering. Now we we'll move from left side or right side. So left side if I start, it is 1, 2. Where the triple board begins, there is the numbering. So here it will be 2. If I start from left side, if I move from right side, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, numbering has to be from left. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It is hept, uh, heptine. It is 2 heptine because the triple bond starts at second carbon. 2 heptine. And then see other substituent. Only one substitute over there, and that is a carbon 6. So it is written as 6 nitro, 6 nitro, 2 heptide, 6 nitro, 2 heptide. We can also write hept 2 ion. This indicates that the triple bond is there, and the triple bond is between second and third carbon. 6 indicate the position of the nitro group O. So, alkane, alkyne are all over. Now, we can have other substituents also. Similarly, uh, other substituents can also be present. Functional group, I would like to say, there are many functional group present along with that. So, there can be carboxylic acid, COH, there can be anhydride like CO, O, CO, anhydride. There can be an acid derivative like CO, X, can be CO, OR, ester. There can be CO, NH2, amide. These are all functional group present. Now, the rule is that all these can also be taught in the same way. The functional group should be there and the lowest number should go to the functional group. So let us see how will you put suppose you are having a functional group. I will do this. This is the basic rule and let us see how we can apply to other compounds. I will write an example CH3, CH2, COOH. I will write the carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid is having a COOH group. So this is the functional group. What is a functional group? Functional group is the most reactive group. 
and that decides the class of the compound, it decides the property of the compound also, the most reactive group. So, in carboxylic acid, this is we given the lowest number, lowest chain containing this as per our rules. Lowest number, this is counted, that is very important, it is counted 1, 2, 3. It is a 3 carbon compound corresponding alkane is propane because in our alkane series we have seen methane, ethane, propane. So, what you do with that? So, remove the ANE and you put, you know, or you remove the E, you remove the E and you put oic acid propanoic acid if it is written only propanoic acid it is understood it is one propanoic acid otherwise the number will be shown over there let us see another example CS3 CH2 CH2 COOH and I will take this I will put another functional group I will put CS3 here Substitute now here the same rule law must change either this one or this one. Numbering has to be given such a way that lowest number to the functional group. So 1, 2, 3, 4 corresponding alkane is butane, so it is butanoic acid. Not over because there is substitute also. So position of the substitute is 3 and the group is methyl. So it is 3 methyl butanoic acid, correct? 1, 2, 3, 4 butanoic acid. If you write 1 butanoic acid, also will do, otherwise, if you don't write, it is understood. It is 1. Or butan 1 oic acid also. So acids can be also written the same way, only it is written as oic acid. So I have written over here. So it is written as the oic acid. I have written suffix. I told you what is suffix. So whenever CO2 to be there, so it is written as a suffix. Now another one is anhydride. Anhydride. So we can write about anhydride also. Anhydride is a derivative of acid. I will write example CS3, CO, O, CO, CS3. And it has got this particular functional group, two carbonyl group linked by an oxygen atom. So, etheric oxygen atom. So, this particular one is anhydride. How to write this anhydride? Uh, so, you have to see it is obtained from an acid on hydrolysis. So, if you can write HOH, you get the corresponding acid. So, this acid is two carbon acid. So, it is, we have already seen it is. Ethanoic acid. So, you have to assume you are doing the hydrolysis and you can see you can get two moles of that. And this particular one, even though two are there, we write only once, you are writing ethanoic anhydride. Remove the oic acid, uh, acid, write ethanoic anhydride. Acid is replaced and you are writing anhydride. But if you are having different groups like CO, O, CO, CH2, CH3, now this is the mixed anhydride. And the dates are obtained by the dehydration of what? Well, dehydration of acid. So, so if you analyze it, you are going to get HOH. One will be a different acid than the other. This is acetic acid or ethanoic acid and that is propanoic acid. In such case, you have to mention both. So, you will be writing in alphabetic sequence. So, this is ethanoic acid, that is propanoic acid. So, when you are writing, you will write ethanoic, propanoic anhydride. Ethanoic, but if it is same, you will write only once. Then similarly, we can have uh, other groups like uh, ester, ester, esters are derivatives of acid again. Esters can be obtained by replacing the hydrogen of the acid by an alkyl. So let us write an example of you know uh, ethyl group coming over here. So how do you write it? It is written as OH. 
OH. So OH means how? So you will see which acid it is. It is one. Suppose you are putting over here H OH, you get this particular acid. So it is three carbon acid. So it is propanoic acid. And what you write is that the substituent which came over here that is written first. So ethyl. This group is ethyl because you know that C two H six is ethane. Remove one hydrogen, you get transporting alkyl group ethyl. Now ethyl. Now which group it is? Three carbon. So ethyl propanoic. Propanoic. All esters are having the suffix OH. Alkanoic. Propanoic. If it was ethanoic acid for ester, plus or ethanoic. Similar. So that's about that. Next one is acid halide. Acid halides are very simple again, very easy to remember. All these are done in the same rules which we are following for alkenes. So alkyl halide. So what we have done is that the OH of the acid is replaced by halide. So it is written as over here alkanoid halide. Alkanoid halide. I will probably oil halide over there. That is going to change. So alkene, you know that alkene, transporting alkene. So you are moving that, you are writing alkanoid halide. And then halide because can be halide. If it is a chlorine, chloride, bromine, bromide, and respective. So same way again uh, for alkyl halide or sorry, uh, alkanoid halide or amide. Amides are also acid derivatives. So what is that? OH is replaced by an amino group. Amino. So here the longest chain containing this particular functional group. This is the functional group. So numbering has to be there over here. Same for acid. So it is a three carbon. So it is propane. So what is that? E is replaced. You are writing amide. So we call it propane amide. If any substituent is over here, suppose I got chlorine here, so numbering one two, so this will be two chloro propanamide. Propanamide. So E of the alkene is replaced by amide. You are going to get the corresponding amide. Next one you can see is for nitrile. Nitrile. Nitriles are having a functional group, cyano group. Cyano group is C N group. So these are called cyanides. So they are called by UPC as nitrile. So I'll write an example. Suppose I write CS3 CN. Common name is methyl cyanide. Methyl cyanide, but when you are writing IUPAC, this carbon is also counted. So it is a two carbon compound. So what you write is so two carbon, it is ethane. So it is ethyl nitrile. So what you have to put is a nitrile is to be added. So it is not methyl nitrile, it is ethyl. This carbon is counted. This carbon actually, even though it looks like this, it is C and like this. This carbon is counted, so corresponding nitrile. But when you call it sometimes as prefixes, the name changes. We'll come across that later. Aldehydes. Aldehydes are also very similar compounds. Are uh, CHO. These are also carbonyl compound. Carbonyl means carbon oxygen double bonded. There. They are written as alkanal. That means E is replaced. We are putting A. A. This A then they can come as formal also later or also also as in come as a uh, prefix. Prefix the thing comes when two or more functional groups are there and the priority depending on the prefix and suffix happens. But alkanal. So if I am writing CS3, CS2, CHO, I will come find the longest chain containing functional group. This is the functional group. I will start from here. 1, 2, 3, so 3 carbon compound, propane, propane, so it is propanal. Aldehyde 
if it is not written, it is understood in work out one. So if I write only propanal, so it is understood, it is one propanal. Or propan one R. If it is having something like CH3, CH, CH3, CHO, then 1, 2, 3, there is a substituent here. I have to number in this sequence only, or this way, whatever. So this will be 2 methyl, 2 methyl, 1 propanal, or propanal. 2 methyl, propanal, 3 carbons are there. AL, wherever AL is there, as the suffix, so aldehyde is there. Next one is ketone. But for that cyanide, you name the ethane nitrile. Is ethane? Actually, yes, whenever ethane is ethane nitrile. Ah, uh, I'll tell you that actually what is there? Whenever any any alphabet like you know A E I O U, these particular things comes, so we won't write it again. Otherwise, that particular one it is changed. So, when you see alkyl, I'll give an example, whenever it is an alkyl, and you are going to get AL, EAL will not come, otherwise it is there. No, that's fine, what about that CH3CL, you wrote ethane nitrile. Yeah, ethane nitrile, because okay. E, there is no one particular AO and what is not coming over here, so you can write it, E is maintained over otherwise it is removed off. So you can see all the cases it was coming, some bubbles were coming over there. And if all is coming, so it is not there, otherwise it is there. Okay. Okay. Now next is ketone. Ketones are compounds that have again carbonyl compound. So a difference between aldehyde and ketone is that. So in aldehyde there is hydrogen over the carbonyl and there is an alkyl group over there. Alkyl is same or different. We call mixed ketones or simple ketones. If R is same, simple ketone, otherwise it is mixed one. Just like what you are seeing for Anhydride. So we call it dialkyl ketone as a common name. Are you see what we call it that it is O N D coming over there? So again O is coming over here. So it is E removed. It is alkanone. Alkane on it's not there. It is alkanone because of the O vowel coming over there. The E and O will not come. So it is alkanone. How do you write it? Suppose CS3, CO, CS3, it is the longest chain containing the functional group. So, numbering from either side makes no difference. So, pre carbon compound, it is propane. So, it is propanone. It is 2 propanone. Uh, uh, ketone will never be but one side. It will be of the uh, middle only because one alkyl group has to be there. So, you can write 2 propanone, it is acetone, common name. It is 2 propanone. And the propanone pre carbon, the carbon has to be at the second one. If it is not mentioned also, it is understood. But if you have another compound like this CH3, CO, CH2, CH3, the number it has to be there. So, longest chain is this one 1, 2, 3, 4, butane, butanone, the number is from left side, not from right, because CO should get the logs now. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, it is 2 butanone or butan 2 on. Butan 2 on. But whenever if you are writing butan 2 on, so butan, then hyphen, then 2, again hyphen, then point. So, numbers and names are separated by hyphen. So, that's about uh, the ketone. Then we can have alcohols. Alcohols, it has got OH group. Same rule, here also longest chain containing CS3, CS2, CS2, OH. Let me see how many carbons are there? 1, 2, 3. So it has to be longest number to the OH group. OH group is the functional group. This OH group is different from phenolic OH where that is connected to an aromatic ring, aromatic ring or benzene ring or any other. Aromatic. So this is one propanol or propan one all. So numbering in this particular way. Here, uh, here again because we can see that O N is coming, so E is not there. But 
But whenever you are having, you know, some compound like CS3, CH, so how many number this? This will be three carbon, two OH groups are there, so we call diol. When two OH groups are there, we call diol. When two aldehyde groups are there, we call diol. When two carboxylic acids are there, we call dioic acid, dicarboxylic acid. So in this case, so numbering has to be from this side. One, two, three. This is propane diol. So here, uh, propane. You can write like this. Numbering one two. Here you can write E because D comes out there, so it is protected. But uh, you can see one two propane propane diol. So diols and triols when it comes, it can be propane. The E will be retained over there, and the other way single all is there, so E won't be there. So that's about that. Aldehyde, uh, ketone, alcohol, thiol. Thiols are having covered with SH groups. SH groups. Uh, so CS3, CH2, CH2, SH. So these compounds are commonly called mercaptans. Thiols. Similar way, so you write the name thiol. How many carbon? 1, 2, 3, propane thiol. Propane thiol you can write because that alphabet is not the appropriate thiol you can write. It is usually called as mercaptan in common name. Amines, amines can be primary, secondary, or tertiary amines. Functional group is NH2 for primary, NHR for secondary, and NR dash for tertiary amine. So it is written again alkanamine. E is not there again because amine is added. So the uh, you know what do you call the suffix amine is written over there. Amine, amine is added. So E is removed off, and you are putting amine, alkan amine. So let us see another example. Uh, little bigger one, CH2, 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 NH2. So here the longest chain containing functional group. So one, two, three, four. Butane, so it is butanamide, one butanamide, amide group is on one, so one butanamide. If it is two or more, like secondary and tertiary, so then what will happen is that secondary, so suppose I got a CS3 here and H over here, this becomes a secondary amide, then this is named as N substituted, so it is N methyl butanamide. N methyl. So this indicates that in methyl, so methyl group is on nitrogen. So if tertiary, then N N, then if the two groups are same, I call dimethyl. Groups are different alphabetically. Suppose I got one CS3, other one C two H five. So it is N ethyl, N methyl, one butane amine. So that's about the amines. So after amines, ethers. Are there ethers are there? CS3 O CS3 symbol ether, or you can have C2X5 O CS3 big symbol. So this is a di alkyl ether common name. So what we call is that alkoxy. You take one of the smallest one, if both are same, you can take any. So, alkoxy alkane is the IUPAC name. So, if two groups are different, then the smallest has to be taken as the alkoxy. So, this is methoxy ethane. Methoxy ethane. So, that's about that. Then, come to the last two groups alkynes and alkenes. We have already seen about alkenes and alkynes also. So, looking at this, we can have a small discussion about the uh, priority rule, which is very, very important. Priority rule is that suppose you have two or more different functional groups. In such case, 
what will happen? The one is given a priority over the other. So the one which is given priority will be written as the suffix, and the one which is not given the priority is written as the prefix. So let us see this example over here. I have written over here. This for example you can see. Uh, so COH group is there and OH group is there. Two functional groups are there. So let us see the priority. So COH is given priority. I have written the descending order, the priority. So I will give priority to this. So numbering will be from this side. So it is a pentanoic acid. Pentanoic acid, five carbons. So substitute one the R there. Now the substitute one is methyl group, other one is OH group. So in the alphabetical group comes first methyl comes. So this is two methyl, four hydroxy pentanoic acid. Second one over here. So this is having chlorine, bromine, nitro. These groups are all usually written as prefix. I have written some groups over here. All these are written as prefix. Nitro, then uh, nitroso, halo, all halo, alkyl, alkoxy, azo, all are coming as prefix only. And uh, let us see over here. So the alphabetic whichever is prime one priority. So will number from left to right side, left side, because more groups are on the left side. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, hexane. So order will be 3 bromo, because B comes first, 3 bromo, 2 chloro, 5 nitro hexane. Another example over here. So this is Uh, over here, let us see the priority. The priority word nitro is not mentioned. They are always written as the uh, prefix. So there is no priority only. They are always at the last. It means written as the prefix. Always. Always. So it's not written there. So we can take any example over here. See this example, I will solve the last one over here. The time constraint. So I have written uh, 2 over here. Uh, the thing is that here two functional groups are there. One is an alkene, other one is alkyne. In the priority rule, alkyne yes. is given priority, so it is written as a suffix. So always will write as enine. Enine. Now, how will you name it? So number should be such that the lowest number can be equal to any of that. Can be double bond or a triple bond. Whichever comes lowest has to be given. Now for this one, so if this here, so priority comes one here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, empty nine. So so this one is given. Suppose I go from left side, so double bond can only number two. So I'll go the priority of the triple bond. So number from that side, so it is having a substitute and also at the sixth position. So it is six methyl, correct? 6 methyl, then how many covered to there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Isn't it? Right? So it is 6 methyl. 6 methyl. Uh, now uh, 5. Correct. 5 E. E. I will write 5. In what I can write plus kept five in one I six methyl kept five in so five in is the double bond is between five and six and one I means between one and two there is a triple bond. So this is all about the priority rules, very important, you can be have 2, 3 or more uh, functional groups also. So priority rule become very important and the suffix and prefix comes over there. Suppose there is a cyanol group and a COH group, then the cyanol group is written not as a nitrile, it is written as cyanol only. So that is written as a prefix over there. Similarly, over here, uh, ketones is written as oxo, even aldehyde can also be written as oxo. Thiols written as the amine written as amino, 
then ether alkoxy, then amide written as carboyl and uh, esters written as alkoxy carboyl. So I think I will stop here. Let us discuss what we have seen from the beginning. We started with nomenclature, IUPAC nomenclature. Why it was required? Because of the large number source was very difficult to trace because billions of commons are there, Berlin common. So it was necessary to create an international level for naming a nomenclature for a compound. So it was started and the different types we have seen. We have discussed only one type of that, that is aliphatic compounds but both saturated and unsaturated with different different functional groups. We started with alkenes, then moved to alkenes, alkynes, carboxylic acid, then anhydride, esters, acid halides, amides, cyanides, then aldehydes, ketones, alcohols, thiols, amides, ethers, alkenes and alkynes. And some groups which are always written as the uh, prefixes. We have also seen what are prefixes what are the rules for the nomenclature. Some particular names are allowed in the IUPAC nomenclature rules. Even aromatic, some compounds are allowed, names are allowed in IUPAC. So, thank you so much. I will like to stop. Thank you. Thank you.